Hello YouTube. Today I'm going to talk about pi and discuss that pi is a constant and I'll be able to prove that and we're going to discuss about mathematics in nature. So we start off with the definition of pi. Pi is the ratio of circumference over the diameter of a circle. So imagine if you have a circle and then you have a diameter. The ratio of the circle, the circumference to the diameter is, is pi. And pi is represented as a symbol, which is like this. Uh, yeah. Then we start proving that pi is a constant. So the step one is we create two concentric circles with polygons and label them. So over here we have two concentric circles and then we have just labeled them. And yeah. Now we have... The drag, in the diagram of the two concentric circles, we notice that the number of sides of the polygon was four. So we have four sides. One, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four. Yeah. So you might notice that if you increase the number of sides, it becomes more like a circle instead of a square. And then if you make it like seven sides, it becomes more and more like a square. So we can say that as it tends to go towards an infinity, it uh, becomes a circle, in fact. Yeah, so uh, in mathematical way, you would say, that, say it like this. So, so C1 is just the circumference of circle. Yeah, and then you would say like that. Uh, and this, you can say that. This just means that as an approach is infinity. Now we divide both of them by their diameter. So for circum cir circumference of circle 2, you divide it by the, its, its diameter, which is 2 times the radius. Yeah. Now, if you might notice, you have a triangle over here. One triangle, and then you have second triangle. It's not at the correct point, but it, you would have it. So, according to the law of similar triangles, you can say that S1 over R1 is equal to S2 over R2. And we name that as equation I or 1. According to equation I or 1, you, we can just say that, say this, okay? And you might notice that this thing is actually this thing over here. So, you can replace that with C, C1 over its diameter and C2 over its diameter. So now we replace that and this is what we get. C1 over 2 times the radius of the first first um, um, circle and is equal to the circumference of the second circle and 2 times the radius which is diameter. Now we just proved that it's a constant. Pi is a constant but there are ways you can calculate pi and the way to calculate pi, one of the method is an approximation method, which is Archimedes approximation. So, but we don't have that much time to discuss about it, so we'll discuss it later. Okay. So now let's talk about mathematics in nature. So first, we start off with pi. Pi has lots of real life, real useful life, real life implications. Okay. So the way a river meanders is described by its sinuosity, the length of its winding, winding path divided by the distance from its source to the ocean, as measured in a straight line. So, okay, and this is just, this came up from anywhere. And if you notice, then uh, the average river has a sinuosity of uh, 3.14, which is pi. Uh, it's 3.141 uh, anyway, but it's an uh, irrational number so you can't express it at, uh, at like 22 by 7 is wrong because most people think of pi as 22 by 7 but if you do it, it is slightly uh, bigger than pi so pi cannot be described as a fraction, it's an irrational number so if you count the decimal places, we continue on forever let's talk about golden ratio so golden ratio is represented as phi is equals to 1.6180 and there are ways to calculate that but we're not going to go into this today let's discuss what real life implications just the golden ratio have so first one is a snake shell if you look at this this is a spiral this is 
made by Fibonacci sequences if you look at this. It's half the squares and you get that. So uh, then once you get that, you just draw a five, and it represents golden ratio actually. If you divide this side by that, the, no, yeah, the ratio of this side with this side, it's golden ratio. So if you just place it over this, you might notice that they, they both are in the exact same uh, golden ratio. It represents golden ratio actually. And even if you look at the hurricane, it also represents a golden ratio. So golden ratio has lots of real life implications. Now Fibonacci series. Uh, Fibonacci series is like you start off with 0, 1, add them up, you get 1, then add them up, you get 2, then add them up, you get 3, and then you keep on going forever. So this sequence, so for example, if you notice the petals of a flower, you uh, they have this kind of sequence. So it has, uh, if you look at this flower, it has one petal two petals, then three petals. They follow this Fibonacci sequence. Thanks for watching. Hope this helps.